In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at a new tool that is very effective in masking something in motion so that you can blur it. Now, you see a car traveling on this clip here. Oftentimes in movies and other television environments, we find that they are masking the license plate. So we're going to do that here. Now, in order to do it for the full clip, I have to start at the first frame where I see the license plate, which happens to be the first frame of this clip. So we'll apply an effect to this, a Gaussian blur, and then we'll mask the blur so it applies only to the license plate. So what I have is I have the place where I want to start, and then I'm going to highlight the clip, and then we're going to click on our effects room, and I want a Gaussian blur. It starts with G-A-U-S, and I've used that in my search criteria before. So I'll just click on it, and I don't have to retype it. I'll take the Gaussian blur and drag it down and drop it on my clip. And then in order to edit it so it's not the entire clip, but just the license plate, I'm going to click on the little I that will lock in this little choice box here, and then click on Gaussian blur. Now on my left side, I have the effect settings for the Gaussian blur. We can choose the degree of the blur, or we can choose the trash can to remove it, or we can put a mask on it. That's what we want to do. And then PowerDirector 365, the new mask tool is this one here, which says select one object. So I'm going to click on that. And then I have my selection tool. I'm going to click add to mask. And then we'll click here and we'll try to take the whole license plate. It looks like I have it there. The next thing I want to do is to track object. Now, if this is the first time that you've used this particular tool, it may load some additional code in your copy of PowerDirector 365. So I'll click on it. It won't load code since I already have applied it. And I will see this screen. Now there's something I found that in my system is a bit of a glitch. If I am using this tool a second time in the same editing session, it will say this may take some time and the progress bar will not move at all. What I found that I had to do was to stop the project completely, save what I've done, open the project and PowerDirector a second time, and then it seems to work. That may not be the case for you, but if that does happen, all you have to do is shut down PowerDirector and start it up. If it's a glitch, I hope they find it and fix it soon. It does work for me this way. So I'm going to pause the recording instead of watching the bar, and we'll get back to it in a moment. It's about done working on the mask, and when it's done, it will start to play the video and show you the mask. And there is the blue area on the plate, which is my mask. And it's done a pretty good job. So I like what it's done. I'm going to stop the preview and click on the OK button in the lower right corner. Now that that's done, I have the mask applied and it's back on the timeline. And so we can control the degree of blur on the mask. I take the slider, I can move to the left where it's unblurred or to the right where it's extremely blurred. I think that's a little intense. So all I want to do is move it back just enough so that you can't read the letters. And something like that seems to work pretty good. If I play it, there we have only the license plate masked and nothing else. You can reset it if you want to try all over again. I'll stop. I find this to be a very good way in which we can take a complex job and cause PowerDirector 365 to make it simple for us video editors. So if you use this kind of technique, you can find it available in 365 in its current iteration.